find the indefinite integral of e to the 3x plus 2e to the 2x plus 4e to the x over e to the 2x plus 1 times e to the x plus 1 dx. We've gone through all the cases of integration by partial fractions. So now we just want to do an example where things are spiced up a little bit. So here we'll do a substitution and then we'll do a integration by partial fractions. So take a look at this. Well, it seems like the smallest unit here is going to be an e to the x. So that's what I'll substitute out. So letting u be equal to e to the x, du is e to the x dx, or dx equals du over e to the x. Now, with a little bit of foresight, I'm just going to say e to the x is equal to our u. We already have that, so why don't we just put that in here. When I replace everything with u, we'll have u cubed plus 2u squared plus 4u over u squared plus 1 over u plus 1. And then our dx turns into du over u. And you'll notice this u here divides nicely into the top. So we have this fraction here, and notice the degree at the top is one less than the bottom, so we don't need to divide into the top. I set up my partial fraction, expansion. So let's see. We have a quadratic that doesn't factor anymore and one linear factor. So we're going to have an au plus b above the u squared plus 1, and a c is going to go with the u plus 1. I clear the denominators, and then I'm just going to kind of hunt and peck and see what I can get for my coefficients. So first I'll target this root here, the u, u plus 1. So if I put a minus 1 into this, on this side I'm going to have a 3. And then on this side, let's take a look. This term drops out and then we're going to get a 2c here. So I have c equal to 3 halves. Okay, another good point to check going to be u equal to 0. So I'm going to get a 4 over here. We'll get a b here out of this. And then we'll get just a c here. So I have 4 equals b plus c. And then we know what c is, so b is going to be 5 halves. And then another good point to pick, just randomly, well not randomly, but the idea is you can pick whatever points you want. But I'm going to go with 1. So over on this side we'll get a 7. And then we'll get a plus b times 2 and then 2 times c. And so we stick in for b and c, and then we'll notice that 7 equals 2a plus 5 plus 3, and that's going to give me minus a half for a. So now I can load all these constants back into our rational functions. And so before I do an integral, I should check to make sure that this makes sense. So let's take a look. Okay, well, I'm going to get everything over a common denominator and see if I get my u squared plus 2u plus 4 back. Okay, well, if I multiply this by a u plus 1, we're going to get these four terms here up top. If I multiply the 3 halves by u squared plus 1, we're going to get these two. And then you'll notice, okay, the constant terms drop to give me a 4. The minus half u goes with the 5 halves u to give me the 2. And then the square terms are going to come together to give me a 1. So I wind up getting the rational function I started with. So now let's take a look at the indefinite integral. So two of these terms I'm going to be able to deal with immediately. The 1 over u plus 1, well if I sub out the u plus 1, its derivative is just going to be 1. So this is just natural log of absolute value 1 plus u. Okay, we have a 3 halves in front. This one, at this point you should recognize it as the inverse tangent of u. So that gets a 5 halves in front. And then I just have to deal with this minus a half u over u squared plus 1. So this one is just going to be a substitution. So I'll let v be equal to u squared plus 1, dv equals 2u du, du equals dv over 2u, and then we're just going to deal with the thing behind the integral. So I just start chugging away. I'll get a dv over v with a half in front. So that's going to turn into natural log of absolute value of v. And then that's going to turn into a half natural log of 1 plus u squared plus a constant. So what I can do now is, okay, we'll go start putting e to the x's in for the u. So from this piece, we're going to have a minus a quarter, because we start with minus a half, natural log 
of 1 plus u squared. Well, u is equal to e to the x. So that's going to mean we're looking at 1 plus e to the 2x. Now note, I don't need the absolute value signs anymore. e to the x is always a positive number. e to the 2x, well, that's taking a positive number and squaring it. Still positive. If I add 1 to it, that's just 1 plus a positive number, which is still positive. So this thing is always a positive number. So we don't need the parentheses there. So as I, when I proceed, I'm just going to drop them. The 5 halves, 10 inverse e to the x, putting in for u. And then 3 halves, natural log, 1 plus e to the x. And again, we could drop the absolute value signs because 1 plus e to the x will never be a negative number. It'll never be 0 either. Okay. Now, if I want to check my answer, we can do it at this step. Okay, if we made any mistakes along the way in the integration, they will show up here. The reason I take this one more step, this is what you're more likely to see at the back of the book in the um, answers for exercises. So typically on those, they're going to combine things as far as they can, but you really wouldn't want to check something like this because this part here turns into a nightmare. So we check on this part here. All right, well, let's get you started on that. Well, this is just going backwards from the step we just did. So we have the minus a quarter, natural log. I take its derivative. That's going to be put in the bottom. Derivative of the inside, that gives me 2 e to the 2x plus 5 halves. Derivative of this is just going to be 1 plus box squared. And then I take the derivative of the box and put it in top, and that's going to be e to the x. Okay, we get an e to the 2x because we have an e to the x and we're squaring it, so we pick up a 2. Then on this term, again, it's going to be take the inside, put it in the bottom, and then take the derivative of the inside. Derivative of this is e to the x. So that's my last term. And now this stuff, okay, I'll just leave it to you to get everything over a common denominator, and you'll see that we get exactly what we started with over here. Okay, note, you're not going to wind up with square terms. It's going to start with a cubic because one of these is going to drop out when you do your substitution. Okay, combining to get to my final step, let's just remember, okay, first off, the absolute values are gone. We explained them away. The one quarter I can bring up to the top here as an exponent by the rule for natural log. Over here, I can bring the three halves up as an exponent, again, by the rule for natural log with constants out in front. So that's going to give me whatever's here minus whatever's here. So since I have a difference, that means put this term in the bottom. So this term is in top. This term goes in the bottom. Whole thing natural log. So you notice that's going to wind up being the final answer if we crush it down as far as we can.